welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Yes, we are real people. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome to the show. Um, very excited to be here. And the T4S TV is something that we had a vision about for quite a while now. So this is very exciting. So it was, I think it was back in 2017, Satan started telling me, I want you to found a new ministry, High Priestess. And I kept sort of going, can't be telling me that. I, no, yeah, no, I just was like, no, no, la, 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 no, 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 you know, and basically, if you're going to try and butt heads with Satan, Satan's going to win. And so <laughs> he kind of forced it, you know, forced me, really. Um, because, you know, when I dedicated, I'd said to him, hey, you know, whatever talent I've got in these hands, whatever I've got in my head, whatever I've got in my heart, whatever I can do for you, just tell me what you want and I'll do it. Um, and so, you know what, when you tell Satan something like that, he's going to take you up on it. And um, within two and weeks after I dedicated, right dedicated. Uh, I was approached by one of Satan's demons. Um, all right. So uh, you mentioned 2017. And I think that's great because it takes me back. You know, I remember you were working very hard for Satan at the time, you know, and you had several projects going on at the time. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Right. So in 2015, I had dedicated and um, the, the demon that I really hoped was my guardian. There weren't any photos of him. There wasn't any images of him. Uh, so I went to bed one night saying to him, can you please show me, like give me some idea, give me something to use as a reference, show me, because I want to make a portrait of you. And I woke up and there was an image in my mind and I knew exactly where that was coming from. It was actually like a tiny split second thing from a film clip. <laughs> and so I went and I found, that, I found that film clip and I waited until the moment came and then I took a screenshot and then I used that as like a reference for him um, and I the first version I did was like that um, and then I printed it off and I was carrying it around with me everywhere you know and I'd I'd be on the bus and I'd like pull it out and look at him or you know I'd I'd be sitting somewhere and I'd like I had it carried in my breast pocket and I'd pull it out and I'd I'd sit and just look at him and sometimes I'd talk to him <laughs> <laughs> and so one day I was gallery sitting and I was there alone and there was nobody really else in the gallery at the time and I was sitting there and I suddenly got the urge and I pulled out his picture and I was sitting there tilted back in my chair just looking at him going wow it's so hot and I'm psychic I've always been psychic and I felt this male presence enter the room and he leaned back like like this, you know, and he leaned, he leaned back across from me and he kind of crossed his legs and he was leaning on the table that was across from me and he sort of went, he goes, well, he goes, you know what I think you should do? I think that you should make portraits of all of us and then turn it into a tarot deck. And I went, oh my God, I, what? <laughs> I, I can't do that. <laughs> I said, I don't think I can do that. You know, there's like 78 cards in a deck. I don't know any of the other demons. I, I, I no, I, I don't know. And <laughs> he said, yeah, because I think you, I think you, I think you can do that. Mm. And I said, you do? And he was like, yep, I do. I think you can do that. And so I wanted to prove myself. I wanted to prove my dedication that it wasn't just like slapping my lips that I really meant it and to put my money where my mouth was and I thought okay I'm gonna do it and so um, that's how it sort of got started um, now one interesting little side note is that mm -hmm. much later on years later on I was doing some research and I randomly came across uh, this it was in the midst of a larger document that basically said that back in the day um, 
one of the things that initiates would do is they would actually take the time to create their own tarot deck and that that was that was like an initiation ritual mm, interesting and, yeah and i thought well that's really interesting because at the time i didn't know that right um and it definitely mm. shows some dedication because i started yes i was asked to do the deck in 2015 but the reality is that uh first i had to learn photoshop and on uh christmas day which is actually Satan's day, um, not not Christ's day. <laughs> but on that day, uh, I think it was in 2011. The, so 2011 going into 2012, he inspired me and said, I want you to learn Photoshop. So I was actually being um, shaped to 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 be ready to take on that job when Andras asked me to do it. Right. Um, and there was nobody to teach me how to do it. I had to do it myself. Um, yeah. So I just reached the point where I was finally getting comfortable with painting people. That's when I made that first portrait of Andras. And then he appeared right away and was like, I think you should do all of us. And that's sort of how the whole thing came about. And I'm sorry if I went off on a big tangent, but. No, it's OK. This is yeah. this is what we want to know. You know, this is the. This is the interesting stuff, the juicy so, part. Well, um, but yeah, you know, um, thank you very much for sharing that. And, you know, uh, personally, I've known you for a couple of years now. A I've been working that. with you. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've known you for quite a while. And I know that, you know, uh, because earlier you mentioned that when Satan came to you, and told you that he wants you to enter the role of high priestess and he wants you to found the T4S ministry, you know, you mentioned that you weren't ready, you know, well, and no, yes. So in 2015, it, I was asked to, to do this tarot for them. And in mm -hmm. by around the middle of t uh, beginning, I can't really remember. I think it was right, at, right around January of 2018. Uh, mm. I thought I was done with the deck. Um, and it was be just a little bit before then, like maybe s the middle of 2017 was when Satan started saying, I want you to be my high priestess. I want you to go out, go forth and start a new ministry. And I was like, ah, I can't do that, you know. Um, and mm. he constantly he kept calling me high priestess <laughs> and mm. and my guardian demons too they they would they would refer to me as high priestess and i was kind of going but you know i don't know um yeah so well i i knew you at the time and personally um you know i remember that it was a very it was quite a battle to get you to to start with this because um you know it's just like how can i say um at the time you were really oh. pushing against it but uh we know this is satan's will because he just gave us so much confirmation on so many levels uh you know can you yeah. just for the for the viewers you know who, who, who doesn't know the the background story can you share a little bit about what the vision is for the Truth for Satan ministry? The vision for the Truth for Satan ministry is, number one, we want a safe space where uh, Satanists from any sort of sect or different, slightly different branch of Satanism can feel free to come in and chit chat and, and get to um, exchange ideas and cross pollinate without fear and without censorship and without people uh, forcing their political agendas upon them. Be a good Satanist by doing X, Y, or Z, or else you're just not a good Satanist and Satan doesn't want anything to do with you. When mm. the reality is that we actually forge our own personal relationships with Satan and the demons and nobody gets to dictate that. Okay, so that's number one. Um, and Satan wanted that space made 
for that purpose. Um, the second, the second is that we are a legitimate ministry, and we're not hiding behind our keyboards. We're real life people, and we're standing for what we believe in, and we're standing up for Satan, and we're giving him a voice. Um, oh, and also, Satan has a vision for us that he's hoping that we're going to be able to fulfill with your help. Of which course, is, of course. Yeah. Uh, which is, well, I know, I know I'm going to get your help, High Priest Black Mamba, but I meant, I meant all <laughs> the, the viewers, there, right? the viewers, yeah. with your help. <laughs> um, <laughs> we wish to actually physically build temples where uh, Satanists can actually congregate and practice. Um, so the other the other thing is that we want to physically build actual temples for people uh, for people. So part of our idea, or what what our goal is as a ministry, is to acquire pieces of property where we can build temples for the community, so that Satanists can actually have a physical space to go to. Because right now, that is very few and far between, if anything at all. Okay. Um, so there's that, but also some other satanic spaces that he specifically wants me to build. Um, I'm not going to come out just yet and say what those are. <laughs> um, I should say that the vision for our ministry is to uh, shine the light of truth upon the misinformation um, that is rampant, absolutely rampant out there when it comes to Satanists um, and Satan. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's a big, it's a big kind of a picture. Anyway, I hope that sort of puts it in a nutshell. You know that uh, <laughs> last point that you made is very important, I think, because you know I see a lot of people who are looking for Satan, and often because there isn't a lot of information out there concerning true theistic Satanism, they, they often end up turning to the wrong sources. Uh, in one of my sermons, I actually mentioned about uh, John Birdo, who he just, you know, the only, back then, during the Satanic Panic, the only information that was available to him uh, was from Christian authors, New Age authors, and because of that, he thought that he had Satanism, or he had a true form of Satanism, but really he was going on misinformation of the enemy. And I just, it really makes me emotional to think how many people out there are looking for truth, yet uh, they don't have the information available. And that's why I think it's very important for us as a ministry to give people a true source where they can find information that's uncorrupted. Yes, I wanted to mention something that happened to me um, not very far from where I live is an amazing yoga studio and I would volunteer there in exchange for free yoga classes, right? And I went in there, and it was a very popular class one evening. There must have been almost 40-something people in the room. We were just elbow to elbow doing this hour and a half yoga um, uh, practice. And at the end of it, um, everybody stayed, and they sat on their mats, and they started questioning the uh, yogin that was teaching the class, who unfortunately was a Christian. And he used that opportunity to start proselytizing to, to these people, uh, which really infuriated me, because he started denigrating Satan, of course. Uh, but the thing that really struck me, and it really, really hit me hard, was when I just sat there on my mat and I looked around at that room. All these people were seeking. They were there because they wanted to expand their uh, spiritual lives 
they wanted to advance, they wanted to learn, they were seeking, they were looking so hard that, you know, they, they weren't sure what they were looking for. And I know what they're looking for. They're looking for the truth. And the truth is Satan, right? And they don't know that. And it just about broke my heart. I actually started crying and I had to like actually like lie down and put my face on the mat because I just started crying uncontrollably. It was so heartbreaking to see all these beautiful, innocent, earnest young people that really wanted to learn. And here's this man taking advantage of that and proselytizing about Christ to them. So they're being led astray, you know, and, and it just really made me sad. And so, yeah, the truth for Satan is there for people who are seeking to advance themselves spiritually. Mm, I love the example that you gave about the yoga teacher or yoga guru because, you know, this is one thing that really does get under my skin a lot is the way that Christians think they have the truth, yet they engage in these crafts or arts which are actually satanic in nature. Like you get a lot of Christ Christian astrologers out there. And then they will say, like, your guardian angel, um, you know, and they'll, they'll do divination. But astrology, in essence, is a satanic thing. And I think, just to quote Anton LaVey here, he said, you know, uh, they, they're playing the devil's game. Okay, I'm, I'm not giving an exact quote, but he said something like, you know, they're playing the devil's game, but mm -hmm. they're using God's name. You know, and in, in really, in really, if you, in reality, if you look at it, uh, there is nothing Christian about astrology, about yoga, or anything like that. And most probably, this guru uh, using this platform to proselytize probably didn't know ten cents worth of information yet. He thinks he's got some secret knowledge, some occult knowledge, you know, well, and something. he's misleading a lot of people. Yeah, this is something I'm, I'm trained to teach yoga myself. And I spent a long time in that studio, uh, took a lot of classes. I used to do two classes a day for about a year. And this is after I dedicated to Satan. I was very... You know, very, very dedicated. I know I'm a, eh, I've kind of slid off a little bit. I'm not doing two sessions a day anymore of yoga. I'm kind of busy with the ministry and, um, you know, doing a lot of writing. And I also uh, put together the, the videos and um, what else? I don't know. Anything the forum. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. It's a lot of work. Okay, it's like a full-time job. Uh, yeah, and I do try, but um, anyway, I think I lost my train. Oh, yes, that. Okay, there's a lot of people that approach yoga, where to them it's like going to the gym, and so they they do the asanas, you know, and. Uh, it's, it's very physical to them and they're, they're doing it and they think that they're doing a workout and the minute that they're done and everybody else settles back for savasana, which is actually the very most important part of the whole thing and that's what you're actually building up to that those last 15 20 minutes when you're when you're doing um, the savasana is the most important time of the, out of the whole you that's why you do it okay and I see a lot of people where as soon as, as soon as they get to that, they spring up and they, they, they're rolling up their mats and they're off, right? So they've completely missed the point. And there's a lot of instructors that are the same way. They give you like maybe five minutes of asana and then they're like, okay, you know, and they're, they're getting you out because they don't understand that um, yoga is actually moving meditation and what you want to do while you're practicing yoga is uh, you're practicing void meditation, which is like, Forget about the thoughts of what just went on yesterday. Forget about your plans for dinner or for later on that day, or maybe you have a hot date later or whatever it is. Forget about all that stuff, right? And 
like you completely focus on on where you are in that moment and doing those asanas. Okay, so it becomes this moving meditation that you're doing. And what I always find is that it it really starts to open up my third eye. And usually about halfway through uh, a program, which usually is about an hour or 15 minutes, halfway through, I'll look around the room and I'll be able to see everybody's aura. And I'll start seeing like lingering energy that's lingering up by the ceiling in the corners. And, you know, um, and also uh, like discarnate people that will come in throughout the class. And yes, that happens. They come in and they'll stand by specific people and watch for a while and then they'll leave. Um, i can give you an example. Uh, there was this one teacher, she used to come in on Friday evenings and she did, um, oh God, what's it called again? Like the Kundalini kind of yoga. I can't think of the oh, name yeah. of it. Yeah, I can't think Isn't of the name of it. It's called uh, Kundalini yoga. Is that it? K Kundalini yoga? Yeah, because I know, like me personally, <laughs> I practice Kundalini and Hatha yoga. Okay, so you're doing like the dragon's breath and you're doing all these things. That it's very intense. And, and she would bring this gigantic gong in with her. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever experienced that? Black Mamba, like a class where they, they, they play the gong for you at the end? They give you a gong oh, bath? No, no. Oh I've, my I've God. Never actually, I've never actually been to a, to a yoga class. Uh, I'm mostly self-taught. Okay. Well, let me tell you, man. It's, if you ever get the chance, you should totally take it because it is amazing. The, the gong is so powerful. So we would spend the first hour doing the kundalini exercises and like the breath of fire and all these really, and it's a lot of work. You're really hot by the time you're done, right? Um, and then we'd lie down for savasana and then she would spend like 25 minutes or so just doing this gong bath. And you would lay there in savasana and you can feel these waves of energy from the sound just rolling over you. It's amazing. And so what happened for me this one time is you laying there. I'm laying there on my back with my eyes shut and feeling this energy pouring over me. And suddenly I'm also completely aware of the room and I could see all around the room, even though I know my physical eyes are shut, I could see. And there were people that had come in. The room was like twice as full as it should have been. And there were all these people that had come in and they were standing at the heads of different mats um, and just standing there and they were all facing the gong as well. And they were all just standing there and they were taking it in as well. And so that was nice, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. I just kind of like noticed it and went, oh, okay, that's cool. Right. And we finished and everybody else left and I wanted to talk to the teacher alone. So I kind of lingered and I waited till the end. And then I, I approached her and I said, um, this might sound kind of strange, but I'm just wondering if you noticed that when you were doing the gong at the end, all these entities and disc discarnate people came in to participate and she went she goes aha she goes uh, she goes yeah she goes I do I do notice that but I normally don't mention it because I don't want to frighten the newbies right. oh <laughs> yeah and we just kind of had a laugh about that and yeah so it's a it's a very very spiritual practice it's not like going to the gym and lifting weights and I highly recommend it. What it actually does is it, it gets all this stuck energy moving. And, and um, what my yoga taught us was generally by, by the time you've hit like week four, and I'm talking you're doing it every day for like two hours a day kind of a thing. By the time you're into your third or fourth week of doing this, you will have crying jags. You will suddenly get really, really angry for no apparent reason. And that's all this mm. stuck emotional energy that is being, um, it's, like a, it's like a barrel of stuff and it's being stirred around. And as you pull it up from the bottom of the barrel, you're experiencing it as it's releasing. So, you know, um, yeah, like I've seen people just go off on crying jags where they have to leave mm. the room and they're crying uncontrollably for like 20 minutes and then, and then they're okay again, right? And, he said that that's totally normal and don't worry about it. It passes. 
and I know it happened to me, man. Uh, for me, I, it was more about, not so much about crying, but I'd get angry. Like, I wanted to just beat the shit you know, out of somebody, uh, you know? <laughs> I really, I really appreciate Sorry for sharing going this on. because, no, 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 I really appreciate it because um, it takes me back to when I started doing yoga. And uh, one thing I noticed straight from the start was that for some reason, when I started, since I, the time that I started doing yoga, my life really improved. And what I mean by that is, and this goes back to what you were saying about the energy coming out, right? In some way, it kind of like purified my energy and it kind of raised my level. It changed the way that I interacted with people, spoke to oh, yeah. people. Um, it just kind of like put me on a higher level. That's right. And it's amazing to think that these yoga exercises are so powerful to impact your life on, in such a way. I remember that when my energy actually raised, uh, things started happening in my life because mm. before I was doing yoga, my, my energy level was on a certain level. And then because my level started raising, the, the circumstances around me and the situations around me couldn't, couldn't match that level. So I had to transition. My life went through a transition where my, the situation around me improved to match my level. You know, yeah. that's a, that's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. Um, how do I how do I say? People that knew me personally after I'd been doing it for about a year, they said, "Wow, you know, your energy is so different. You're so you're so you seem so grounded. You're a lot calmer. You know, it's it's a really beneficial practice. And and this is one of the main things as a Satanist that you want to be doing and then of course you know you're supposed to be meditating but um, yoga itself is a moving meditation so if you're practicing that um, for example some people find it really hard to meditate or um, you know they'll, they're like well how am I supposed to do void I can't just sit there and think nothing for for 30 minutes because that's what people think doing void actually is when really what it is is very very simple it's it's all about completely just paying attention to what it is that you're doing right now in the moment. And when these thoughts come in about, oh, I'm so pissed off at that guy when what happened yesterday or, you know, and just let it go. Or another thought will come in, oh, you know, what the heck am I going to make for supper? And I wonder if my boyfriend called me back yet, you know, <laughs> I should check my, I should mm -hmm. check my messages, you know, and you, you've got all this mm -hmm. stuff. Don't latch onto it and just let it float out again and just keep focusing on what it is that you're doing. And as an artist, we call that, uh, we find, we, we actually call that getting into the zone or hitting the zone. And so what, like when I hit the zone, that's when I get my best work, right? The painting will paint itself. I don't have to think about it. I just, you know, you suddenly you're operating from the sense of knowingness and you just know what to do and don't question it and just do it. And this sort of a thing will help you in all aspects of your life. I'm sorry if I'm getting a little bit going on. Um, no, it's, you know, that's the thing. Um, that's what, that's what this T for STV is all about. You know, it's, uh, everybody is just welcome. We're having a conversation and everyone's joining us in this okay. and it's a <laughs> casual a thing, right? Yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. so I just want to go back to my tarot for a second. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, when I started the tarot, I think I got about three months in. And the first attempt came where I was, because the enemy will work through uh, people that are without, people that have holes in their aura, and they will reach through those people as if through a soft puppet and then use them to physically come after you. That can happen. And that's what started happening with me. Things started to happen. I got, 
attacks like crazy, okay? And, um, but I think it was in 2018. This is the first proof. Oh, wow. That looks okay, amazing. So, so this is like the first proof. Mm. Um, this is not the best design, though, because you should be able to, it, it, you don't want it to be just um, orientated one way. Okay, so it wasn't, it wasn't the oh. best design. So there was that, and then, let's see if I can just show you. So, for example, if you look at this card, you can see, you, can, you can't even read what it says, right? And the sigil was mm. too small. So, you know, these yeah. are things that you find out as you're doing the work, right? So that was the first, that was the first one. Okay. Um, so here's the first one. Oh yeah, there. and there he is. But I have the to final say, version. oh, oh, is this the, the new version? This is the final version with the new and improved oh, yeah. sigil, where you can actually read the writing. And don't tell me it you'd looks like great. It. Um, and it's got oh, the, and yes, the, new the, the back of backing. the card as well. Yeah, so some good. of them were like that, and some of them didn't change. Like actually, a lot of them didn't change. Like Andras is still Andras. It's just that. The colors are richer. Um, yeah, so, so I'm just sort of showing this to you because for all those debtors out there who think that I'm just talking through my hat, that's the first <laughs> version. Oh, great. Yeah. This is the second version. Okay. I'm, so, very, like, I'm it's, very excited about this. It's it's real and it's, it's coming to you. It's going to be coming to you. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that's, that's, I know it's a lot of cards, right? It's, I can barely hang on to them all. <laughs> yeah, but so. But the portraits are absolutely amazing. It's very beautiful. Thank you. I'm really pleased to show you my portraits of the gods. This is the first version. Um, this is what it looks like on the back. I use the highest quality cardstock I could get. It has a special linen finish with a UV protectant coating and the colors are very rich and jewel-like. Here's what it looks like on the front. You know, it's kind of hard. There's so many of them to hold, hold on to, but... Uh, oh, dropped some. It's a lot of work. There's 78 cards in this deck. It took almost eight and a half, nine years to complete. Each card is an individual work of art. You can purchase it up to a size of 55 by 35 inches on brushed aluminum or on plexi. I also hand drew and colorized all of the sigils and you can order those. I think they come up to about 25 by 30 inches, something like that. And they can be ordered on, again, um, brushed aluminum or on Plexi, or you could even just have it, or you could also just have it printed on some fine art or photography kind of paper, if that's more in your budget, but it would look fantastic on brushed aluminum. So, um, and that's really how I meant them to be, so that the jewel colors really come through. He's hot, isn't he? <laughs> Nebros. This is Nebros, yeah. This is Nebros. The Queen of Cups. That's me. That's my significator, actually. That's the one that always comes up, meaning myself. And this one here, Death, 
the um, painting that's in the backdrop happens to be this painting because yes I do paint landscapes everything in this deck is 100% original fine art I even made these actually I do a lot of different things and I look forward to sharing that deck with you very soon in fact there's three different versions of it this is just the second or the first I've got quite a few versions anyway Oh, I lost one of my earbuds. There we go. So tell me a little bit about the challenges that you faced making this deck. Um, okay, so first off, I didn't have my own equipment. I had to go to this gallery that was in my neighborhood. First, I had to earn a key. Uh, um, let me think. So, yeah, first I earned, first I was working from like six in the morning till about three in the afternoon. When the space was open for for business, people obviously it's a public space, right? So anybody can come in, and um, the enemy that didn't want this deck to see the light of day was working through their sock puppets and sending these random people in to harass me. Like they'd come in and zoom right in on me and just start in on me and like, it was really crazy. And so I started wearing these big cans on my ears. And sometimes I wasn't even listening to anything. Sometimes I was and I'd blast really loud music and I'd just pretend like I can't even hear them. You know, um, I was getting a lot of interference that way. And I remember one fellow that came in and was bugging me so much that I just lost my temper and I like, shut off my side of the computer and I got up and I literally walked into the back room and there's a door because the back is a studio space and I went all the way mm. to the back to where one of my paintings was on the easel and there was another artist back there and I was talking to him saying oh, I had to come back here and hide this guy won't leave me alone he actually the door opens up and the, and the guy followed me all the way back back to the back Oh, is this one of your, what's this? And he's asking about this portrait that, of one of the gods that I've got sitting on the easel. Like, I mean, very intrusive, right? Like, it's not yeah. a coincidence, <laughs> right? And um, the man that was with me back there, the other artist, he basically grabbed the guy by the scruff and dragged him out for me. <laughs> I had a bouncer there. <laughs> um, but, you know, so things like that were happening a lot. And then uh, I finally earned a key. And I started going in there, and I would pull all-nighters in there. And uh, so I was there alone. Um, and I loved it. I just loved being there by myself. It was fabulous. I loved it. And the place was haunted, you know. And Can you tell me a little bit about the hauntings, some experiences you had? Or... Sure. So uh, lots of times, and it, was, it felt like a male. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, actually, what? Yes. Okay, so um, I'll give you a great example. I had worked all night long, and uh, in that instance, I was actually setting up the front space for a show, and I'd spent all night hanging. Nobody helped me. Nobody would help me. I had to do everything myself. Like. So uh, by five in the morning, I was crying, you know, because I really didn't know if I'd finish on time and I was really stressed out and I was hungry and I was tired and I just thought, wow, you know, and nobody even bothered to help. And mm. the, the thing was that the original people that were supposed to be hanging the show had flaked off at the last minute and I'd stepped in to, to take over to try to make sure that this show would come off. So I was going out of my way to help, but nobody would help me. Okay, so I was feeling really desolate and alone and, you know, <laughs> not very appreciated. And anyway, I, I laid down on this couch and I tried to take a nap. And now I'm alone in the space. So I lay down and I had a, I had a blanket, put the 
pulled the blanket up and I would just close my eyes and I'm laying there. And then the, the door that separates the back workspace from the, from the front area, the door opened up. And I heard like boots clomping across the floor and and I thought, who the hell is that? <laughs> like I thought it was a load in here. And I opened my eyes and a man walked in and he stopped at the foot of the couch and he stood there looking down at me. And he was pretty tall and handsome and he had like dark curly hair and he was a white guy and he had a guitar. And I was just I was just I wasn't afraid, I was too surprised. You know, and he That's wasn't amazing. Threatening. He wasn't threatening. He wasn't threat. You know, like if if there was a mm. threat, yeah, I would have been scared. But I didn't feel like that. I felt more like he was coming to comfort me. Oh, and he, interesting. Yeah, and 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 just to let me know that actually, I'm aware of you. And you're not by yourself. And he came and he he stopped and he looked down at me. And I kind of looked at him, and I said, okay. I said, well, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he, he, he kind of picked up his guitar. It was on a strap, you know, and he kind of like mm -hmm. took hold of, he took hold of it and he started to play and he played for me for about 10 minutes, like an instrumental piece. And he played it for me and then he finished. And I said, I said, you know, that was really nice. I said, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. I said, but I really need to like, sleep now do you think you could just just leave me alone okay like I really want to just sleep now and he just went and then he turned around and he walked back into the back and he shut the door behind him and I just pulled the blanket over my head and just went I don't even care and <laughs> I just went to sleep so that that was one of the first interactions I had with the, with the ghost of the gallery and everybody knew it was haunted and people were <laughs> People were afraid to be there after hours alone, and mm. for me, I was like, I don't care, you know, I am I get along with them, it's okay. Um, so at least you had some company. Yes, yes. <laughs> when you were working long hours. Oh my but, God. Um, oh, I yeah? wanted to just tell you one more, <laughs> just because it's kind of fun, if that's okay. Yeah, uh, of course, yeah. So I was working on a portrait. Um, now I'm working on one of the portraits, you know, and uh, it's about 11 o'clock at night and I hear the front gate opening up at the gallery front door and I thought, who the hell is that? Right? Like normally there's nobody there and nobody's coming in at this time of night. So I'm kind of going, well, who's that? And here comes this guy and he's really like, one of these chatterboxes and, and an energy suck. So mm -hmm. he'll he'll come in and he'll just like almost talk. like a psychic vampire. Kind yeah, of. he'll yeah he'll come in and he'll like chat 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 and he's just sucking attention and energy, and then when he's full he'll leave. <laughs> and I and and when I saw him coming I was kind of like oh god, I mean I <laughs> and we're discussing we're discussing the work and the techniques and blah 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 and he's doing most of the talking and I'm just. In my head, after about 20 minutes of this, I'm kind of in my head going, fuck, I wish she would leave, you know. Like, I'd like mm. to get back to work, but I don't want to be rude. When suddenly, I hear this commotion out in the middle area where the computers are and the chairs. And, well, it sounds like chairs are getting dragged all over the place. It's a commotion. And he stops talking and turns around and he's like, well, hey, I thought we were alone. And I said, I'll go and check it out. He was too afraid to go. <laughs> All of that part of the gallery was dark. The only light up was on in the back workroom. And I said, I had a feeling I knew who it was anyway. So I said, I'll go and check and don't worry about it. And I walked back. Everything's in its place. Nothing's been dragged anywhere. All the chairs are where they're supposed to be. I went and I checked the front gate. Everything's locked up. I go back into the back room and he's like, well, what was that? I said, don't worry about it. So he starts chattering again, and five more minutes goes by, and the photocopier is right on the other side of the door that separates us from the front from the back. And suddenly there's all this commotion. You can hear papers rattling, and all the stuff is moving. And again, he jumps and turns around. What is that? What is that? I said, don't even worry about it. And now he's like, he's standing. His back is to this 
behind him is a wall full of tools. So like screwdrivers and just big wrench things that are like on, on nails, you know, and chains hanging off of nails and, and all kinds of tools, you know, and hammers and all these things hanging off of nails and stuff are hanging on all over the wall behind him. And um, I'm facing him. I'm looking right at him. And all of a sudden, it was like this invisible hand went through the tools. And all the, oh, everything, wow. everything started moving, like the tools and everything were moving. And he jumps three feet in the air, you know, and spun around and, and everything's still moving. And I was just standing there going. <laughs> and he, he said, I'm out of here. And he just took off and made a beat. He didn't have a problem leaving me <laughs> alone, right? He, <laughs> he was obviously took, freaked out. He was totally freaked and he left. And I, I walked into the front door and made sure everything was locked up. And then I went back into the back room and I said, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And I could almost feel the guy standing there going, and I said, thank you, now I can get back to work. And it's just us again, thank you so much. And then I went back to work. And after that, there were no more disturbances. So, I, yeah, wow. it was really, really interesting stuff happened in there. Yeah. That must have been such a once in a lifetime experience. No, this kind of stuff happens to me everywhere. <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, very, and this is, you know, this is the stuff that, that I'm interested in hearing about, you know, people's experiences with entities from other dimensions or, uh, you know, spirits, I, these kinds of to, things. I used to babysit this uh, young man. I met him when he was about seven. And I babysat him until he was about 10, 11 years old. And I would tell him my stories, you know, of all these different things that happened all throughout my life, you know, ghostly encounters and things that I've seen and experienced and whatever. And um, he loved it. He loved it. I remember he would pretend he had absolutely no interest in me, right? He'd be playing with his friend in his room, and I'd come over, and his mom would greet me, and, okay, I'm ready to go. Everything's okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And I'd have the TV going, and he'd ignore. He'd be ignoring me. She'd leave. <laughs> and the minute that she was gone, this kid and his friend were, like, on me. Tell us your story. Tell him, tell him that one you told me the other night about. Oh, tell him, tell him, you know. And one night, this this young man looked at me and he said, you know, you should write a book. Now, <laughs> coming from a child, I think that that carries more weight because children are very uh, truthful, right? They're mm. not going to say something to massage your ego. He really meant it. And yeah, maybe someday I will. Well, if when you write that book, I'm definitely going to read it. That's for sure. I see so there are many portraits on your tarot on your tarot cards you know and yeah. i see a lot of work went into that can you tell me a little bit more about how long it took you to actually paint these portraits because from what i understand every portrait is hand painted right yeah uh so what would happen is that um because there were so many gods, goddesses, you know, I decided to just start with the ones that I felt the closest to and the most comfortable with. Mm. And that was kind of the idea to start with. And so, of course, I'd already done this one. Although, yeah, very beautiful. He, he actually, I did him three times. This is the third version. It's the best version out of the three. And that's the one that's going to be in the deck. The, the first version was not bad, but I knew I could do it better. It wasn't really, you know, I wasn't happy with it, although it's not bad. Uh, mm. So then I painted him again, and that one was super embarrassing because he looks like he's about 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> he, look, he, does, he, looks like, he looks like a teenager, right? He looks like really young. It's ridiculous. Mm. 
and I I just laughed at it. I'm like, there's no way that anybody is ever going to see that one, right? So, <laughs> I mean, maybe that's how Andras actually looked when he was 12, <laughs> you know, but it's like, I'm not, no. And so I was like, I'm really sorry about that. So I tried again, and I I got to that one. Um, I've lost the train of thought. So ask me the question again. No, no, I just... Because I can see, like, the portraits are very detailed uh, and very beautiful, but there's also a lot of them, and you had to paint each one of them by hand. So oh. I'm thinking okay. that it it should it probably took you a long time to do all of that. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just talk a little tiny bit about the process. Um, mm. So I would I would you know, pick a god that I felt seemed like a good choice. <laughs> and then I would ask them, can you please give me information, give me some ideas, show me what you want. Is there specific colors that you want? Is there anything else that maybe you want? Uh, I'll do my best to listen. A lot of times I'd get information in my dreams, um, which is actually a terrific way to communicate with the gods the demons um, because that that ego that logic side of you is is not present you're you're actually operating out of your intuitive uh, the half of yourself and and you don't have that interference so communication actually for a lot of people is probably easier at that point and so yeah a lot of times I'd wake up and I you know I that's what I was getting at um, so Andras had said, hey, you know, do this. I thought, okay. I started working on um, a few preliminary sketches for uh, Beelzebub and for uh, Horus and for Sora. And I went to bed actually clutching the sketchbook and fell asleep with it. And Satan came to me that night. And I woke up with a directive in my head. He said, put those aside. You're painting me next. And he'd given me a laundry list of colors and symbols. And actually also like um, in here, like a kind of a vague outline. Like I could see him sitting on this sort of a throne like thing. And I had a sense of the, the colors and everything. And so I, I was like, okay, um, I hadn't planned to do him right away. But it turns out, because that actually is the correct etiquette and protocol, you're supposed to go through Satan in order to reach out to all these other demons that are affiliated or associated with him. And in my zeal, I'd forgotten about that little detail, and so he actually helped me out by doing that. And he was also just kind of sussing me out. Uh, so, yeah, I worked I worked on that portrait for him. Uh when it was finished, that's a whole other, I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many interactions that took place, but essentially in a nutshell, I got his approval and he said, go ahead and contact anyone you want. You have my blanket permission. And then after that, I would just, oh. I would just pick somebody and ask them and, and then wait, you know, and um, like some people, answered me right away and some people didn't like uh with lilith uh, i think if i remember correctly let me see i think it was the beginning of 2018 when mm -hmm. inanna brought lilith in to show me what i'd done for her and then lilith said okay all right i'm down for it now you can paint me and then oh, she, cool. yeah, and, and then she specifically sent me, uh, for three nights running, she sent me information and I would wake up with this laundry list in my head of, of all these things. Go research this, research this, research this. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I'd, I'd be pushed to the computer, you know, as soon as I woke up and, and I'd have, a, and I'd write down everything that I'd been given to, to go research. And then I'd spend the whole day just researching this stuff. And it was all these different things that you wouldn't think were connected. And yet, 
when I researched them, they all led back to Lilith. So I got I got different names because uh, she's she's been known by different names in different cultures, different names, colors, attributes, powers, titles, associations, um, symbols. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Um, I've never shared it publicly. I've just kept it to myself. I kind of felt awkward about sharing it, sort of like, well, who do you think you are to share that as if you know anything? And yet she showed me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. You get, you get people that are jealous haters that, that want to tear you down um, mm. and attack you. And I got my fair share of that for sure. And it made me a little bit hesitant about sharing some things. However, now that I finally accepted that, yes, Satan did promote me and I am a high priestess with my own ministry and it's okay. I can share that stuff. So, Of course, of course, you know, and this, I think in all of this, uh, the lesson that I take away from this is the importance of believing in yourself. The importance of trusting yourself, you know, and I really, I think that your tarot deck is going to have a very big impact on the world. I see that many of your cards have sigils on them. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about what makes your tarot deck different from, well, let's say, the... Rider White tarot deck, or I'm you know. sorry, I uh, it's easy to sort of get lost in all the there's so much information to share about it that I sort of mm. start to answer and then I get off on a tangent and I forget what the question even was. But so I made a conscious decision when I was going to do these portraits that I was going to use references, photographic references. Uh, what mm. that would do is um, make them look as lifelike as possible. It would save me the time and the effort of having to do all that proportionate drawing and calculations and so on because it's done for me, right? I have I have something that's right there that I can work from. Um, so there was that consideration, and then the other consideration is that these demons, gods they're real people, they're real beings, and I want them to look as real as possible. And that really ruffled some feathers. Some people were very, very upset at that concept that, you know, these are real people. Did they appear a la Star Trek and beam down from a starship and sit for me? No. But what they would do is they would implant like pictures in here, and then they'd send me off. Oh, in your third eye. Yes, and they would they would send me off to either my library or else they would send me off to the online and they would give me something to search and they'd tell me to go search. And the picture that I had in my third eye, I would, if the connection was strong with them and it was a real connection within the first five or ten minutes, there it was. And it would be animating, you know, and I, it would, the, the picture would match what I was seeing here. And I knew that that was something that I'm supposed to use for them because it actually does look like them. So that's actually what was working. That's sort of what was going on. Um, I love right, that so, card. It's so, so red. The, the red and the color tones in the card is so rich and beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Thanks. You know, just looking at your deck i can see there's a lot of satanic energy in there do, thank you do you think there will be any like extra advantages or benefits well to, um, like like if i can just give you an example right like um because it, the deck has sigils on and stuff let's say i carry the deck with me you know can that bring me good fortune or protection are there any kind of like benefits I can additionally get from purchasing this deck, like spiritual benefits? Well, 
Um, gosh, there's actually a few a few questions in that one question. So <laughs> take um, your time to answer it. <laughs> gosh, sorry, I my mind kind of blanked on that for a second because there's so much. Um, it's like when you have too many things that you're trying to say all at once, and it's like a log jam in my head, and mm -hmm. I can't get anything out. What you're actually asking me is, uh, for example, okay, here's here's Eligos. Um, if you're carting this around with you, yes. What what these? How do I explain? Most people cannot visualize. They're not artists. Mm. They can't visualize, and anybody who's ever staged a house for a showing for a prospective buyer will understand. You know, they they bring in the fancy furniture and they hang the paintings and they put the flowers in the vase and they they bake cookies so that it smells good in the house and they do all these things so that when the prospective person comes in, they can immediately get the idea and look around and go, "Wow, yeah, I can see myself here. I can visualize it." Because it's been done for them, and that's what that's what these cards are, okay? Um, that's what they look like. Uh, however, you have to understand that these are um, extra-dimensional beings. Yes, they're real, but they're not physically present here the way we are. And so, when they, if they were to take physical form here. They're going to they're gonna appear to you in a form that you're most comfortable with. And so this is how they appeared to me. They, they might not necessarily look exactly like that for you, but the sigil is like the telephone number. So when you, when you take this card and you're carting it around with you, and that's what I was doing with the original portrait without even realizing it. Oh, wow. Right? I was carrying him around with me everywhere. I'm sitting on the bus and I'd pull him out and I'd be like, oh, I just love you. Oh my God, you know. And, <laughs> and I was connecting to him without realizing that that's what I was doing. Um, and that's why Satan wanted me to create this deck. That's why I was given the idea in the first place because this way it's like having the phone book right in your hands. Get it? This is this is That's actually amazing. this is like a phone deck. It's like a phone book, and you can pick oh, yeah. whoever whoever you want and phone them up, and you reach out to them so, through the sigil, and you can visualize them because you've got an idea that I've yeah. I'm giving you a basic sort of an idea, and you can use that, visualize them through the sigil, and when they come to you, they might look slightly different, but. Mm. You've got to remember it's about the energy because they're actually coming to you as a form of energy. Yes, they are real physical beings, but they're not physically here. So the aspect of them that comes and reaches out to you that you're making contact with is actually non-physical. It's extra dimensional. Am I so making sense? What I, what I gather from what you're saying is, like, let's say I've got a Ouija board and I put this and I, you know, I want to make contact with a specific demon. So then I can use, maybe I can take their card out of the deck and put it on the, on the Ouija board and it's going to help me to establish contact or something like that. Yeah. Uh, let's say that there's a specific, a specific demon that you're wishing to make contact with or to uh, forge a relationship with and you want to, so what I would, what I do a lot is I'll take the ones that I love that, that I'm close to and I'll pull them out of the deck and then put them right on right here so that they're right at my keyboard and I can look down at them and they're right they're right there with me. Um, you can mm. take them and you can put them on your altar so that when you're meditating it's right there. you know again, it, it's a calling card. It's a calling it's literally oh, like great. a calling card and you can use something. These, um... And Something they will reach out to you yeah. through the deck. They will reach out That's to you. Right. You know. um, I just uh, want to quickly sorry. say this yeah. while it's, sorry, when it's, I want to say this while it's still in my head, because uh, sometimes right. I tend to go, I'll blank out on you, right? Maybe it's because I'm older. I have short-term memory loss. 
uh, when you were speaking about uh, the cards in the tarot deck being a calling card, right? It takes me back something I used to do a lot when I was new in theistic Satanism. I used to take a sigil and I would actually place it under my pillow. And what we call this is, I used to call it dream sigils. Yeah. So what I'm wondering now is, would a tarot card have essentially the same effect if maybe I put the tarot card under my pillow that, you know, this will help me to maybe establish contact? It's, the same, it's exactly the same idea. However, I wouldn't recommend putting these under your pillow because you're going to damage them. Oh, yeah. yeah right. I, and you don't want to do that. But you could put it on your on your bedside table and prop it up so that when you're laying in bed, you can actually look at it. You know, mm. but or if you're going to if you're going to put it under your pillow, maybe put it put it. You'd actually tape it between some cardboard or something and put that, you know, something to protect it because you don't want to bend this, right? You don't want to damage them. You know what I, what I mean by putting it under my pillow? Uh, this is something I do with my own tarot deck, right? I actually have my tarot deck here, uh, but I'm oh. not going to take it out. But uh, something I did with my own tarot deck to get my energy in there is I take it, I put the cards in the tarot box and I wrap it in satin or silk. And I put the whole box under my pillow and I, I slept with the box under my pillow for like two weeks. And that's kind of how I break my deck in, you know, because you get your yeah. energy in there. And then if you want to do a reading for somebody, you're, you know, you've charged the deck. And that's kind yes. of how I charge my deck. So I'm, I'm wondering now if I yeah. sleep with your tarot deck under my pillow, if uh, because there's a, obviously a very satanic energy in there. Um, I'm wondering what the benefits will be. Will I get visions, premonitions? Uh, will, will yeah, I so, get... sorry, I, while it's mm. coming to me, you got to just let me jump in there and say it because mm. I, my mind just, it's just the way I am. I'm sorry. Um, so the first thing is, yeah, take the whole box of it. Take the whole box, wrap it in something to protect it. Um, and... Yeah, you could put it under your pillow. Um, again, I'm kind of a little leery about that because you can you might damage it. But if you just put it right beside your pillow, you know, just mm. have it as, as long as it's within your aura, as long as it's in your auric field, which it will be, as long as it's on or around your pillow, mm. you're you're good to go, right? And yes, that's what you do with a brand new deck, and that's what you do with this deck as well because you're right, you have to charge it up first. Um, mm. And then, like I've been using, I've been using this deck for, I don't know, the last year. I mean, see, this, this is this is what you call a proof, uh, a proof. It's it's just a proof deck. It's not the final version. Um, this one does have a couple things that need to be tweaked, so it's still not the perfect version. However, there's no reason I can't play with it and use it. And once. Mm. Once I broke it in, so what I find is that there's specific cards that my guardian demons will use. I'll feel the pull. I'll suddenly feel like, hey, you know, why don't you get that deck out and kind of shuffle it up and just pull a few cards, right? So I'll do that and I'll shuffle it up and pull a few cards. And invariably I will get, you know, if it's coming from Sorath, Sorath will show up. Wow. You know, if it's coming from Andras, Andras shows up, ready to go. And then right after that, um, so like, for example, I, w I might get, it's coming from Sorath, my significator, which means, oh, interesting. which, which means um, this message is for you. Mm. And then, and then it might be followed by, um, there's another one that always comes. In my case, that's High Priestess. <laughs> that one comes to me a lot. Uh, and then there's a, there's some other cards. Okay, and then also, if it's coming from both of them, I'll get both of them. It might start with this Great. one and finish with Sorath, or vice versa. Okay, so I will get these Significator cards. Um, I will get, there's also a few specific cards that say, basically, I love you. 
or I'm thinking about <laughs> you. You know, like the, the, they have a personal meaning, right? Like there's one that Satan mm. sends me that I'm not going to share with you that is just personal. Mm. Um, mm. But uh, it's his way of, of it's kind of like a love letter. Um, wow. And when, when he sends me that, I feel the love. And I know that it's coming from him. So if the message is coming from Satan, I'll usually get the emperor followed by that specific thing. And then the next few cards after that will be the message. And don't censor mm -hmm. it. You know, just, just take the cards out, put them out. And then the deck will suddenly feel like that charge is gone. Which means that the mm. message is... That's it. The mess, and then you can sit there. Um, I'll just get this out here. So here's the manual. Oh, cool. Yeah. So the manual kind of like it's got some instructions. Uh, got a little you know, bit for... of an intro. A little bit of an intro. Uh, there's Sorath. That's the major arcana, and then there's you know little bit of description of each one i've tried to keep it short and sweet so it's easier to remember yeah. you know you just want to get a basic sort of an overview of like what it means so that you know to keep it simple so that when you're mm. trying to look at five or six or seven cards you're not reading 20 pages of information because by the time you've read all that you can't remember what the hell you know you, you want to try and keep mm. it simple right so basically that's what this is Right. So it's just, you know, and then you can look up the message and you'd be amazed how specific the information is that you're getting and how it actually does relate to what's going on. I mean, mm. yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. That's great. It's great. Yeah. So fun. I don't know, I don't know how much time we have left, but I would really appreciate if you could actually give me a tarot reading just to demonstrate. You know, maybe how the deck works, and as you know, it it was my birthday recently. So if you don't feel like doing a whole reading, maybe you can just pull pull a <laughs> card for me, a card for the year or something. You know. Oh my God! I'm well. Um. Geez, I wasn't expecting this. Um. <laughs> well, let me just see. All right, my magic deck. <laughs> the thing I, the thing with with my deck is that I, I apologize so, if there's um, noise of motorcycles and cars. I mean the city center here. Uh, no, I don't hear anything actually. All right. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Was there anything specific that you wanted to know, or is this just a little, I don't know, like a well, real quickie? Yeah, maybe, yeah, I was thinking, you know, because it's been my birthday recently, so uh, maybe a card for the year, you know, just uh, to, to set the tone of the year or something, you know, to... Is there anything that you would like to communicate for... Ooh, High Priest Black Mamba. <laughs> there was one card that just jumped out. I'm just going to pull oh, three. Yeah, uh, when All that right. happens, usually if the card suddenly leaks out like that, just let it happen because it's coming out for a reason, right? Mm. And I'm not doing the specific sort of, um, uh, like, shuffle and then, and then cut the deck and then pull three cards. That's not how I do it. I just actually... Whoa, there's another one that just fell out on its own. I just need one more. So it's interesting how that happens. I'm not doing this on purpose. This isn't like, it's not, you know, this is, and I can already see it. I'm like, okay. Now I'm wondering about if there's anything else you want to add to that message. Please do, please do. Okay. 
Okay, so we have the first three, we've got three cards here. First card oh, is Anubis, death. Uh, oh, all right. Death is not literally like physical death, okay? It very rarely means that. What it actually means is transformation um, and that you are going through a time of great changes right now in your life, uh, which I happen Maybe to know the... is true. Maybe the end of something old and the start of something new. Well, this is exactly you're you're transitioning. OK, um, so this is not a negative card. This is actually a positive card. It means that energy is not stuck. Energy is flowing and things are moving and flowing for you. And there's there's some things your life is transitioning right now and changing. OK, and I know that that's positive because the very next card that I'm getting here is the Ten of Pentacles. Marcosias, she is the goddess of victory. Oh. This is not, yeah, this is actually, one second. I'm going to pull out the older version here and I'm going to cut that version out because that's not, that's actually not the final version. It's not the proper version of her. So give me one second. Uh, let me see, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Show me, show me, show me, show me. Yeah, and here she is. Um, I'm going to have to show you that this particular version of the card instead because I tried to do her a couple times, and you know what? The first version was superior, so I'm going to go back to the original version. Sometimes you think you're improving something and you're not. But anyway, <laughs> um, so the second card was Marcos Hayes. Oh, I love that. And she is the goddess wow. of victory. So the indication is that um, while you may be struggling with some of these metamorphoses that are happening with you personally and also uh, around you, so that could mean like a change of uh, location or home, um, new horizons, blah, blah, blah. This indicates that the path that you're on is actually going to um, culminate in a victory for you mm. personally. And also um, the the Ten of Pentacles is, let's just quickly check that. Um, uh, that's, but I do believe that that's a very, very positive, uh, let's see. Oh, interesting, yeah. So the Ten of Pentacles is, is also uh, about home and hearth and family and um, like like that happy kind of uh, home that is built around oneself where you are secure, you have financial freedom, you're with oh, the nice. one that you love, right? And you're starting a family. That's actually what that's all about. And um, yeah, family ties and property and inheritance and, and ultimate like happiness with your partner and spouse. So that's an extremely positive card. Ooh, getting tingles actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did. I just got this rush of energy when I said that. Ooh. Uh, and then the third card is also very positive. Before I show it to you, I'm going to, here it is. All right. So improved finances, uh, things are morphing in your life, but it's, looks like it's pointing towards a very good outcome because this is a partner and family and home and hearth and you know the financial things right so that yeah so it's positive finances and it culminates in the world mm -hmm. now the world is the ultimate prize and um it means triumph and ultimate achievement and advancement, opportunity, no limits, the embodiment of a long and difficult journey, everything coming together, soul fulfillment, the stars aligning in one's favor. I think that that's pretty damn positive. So and that's very positive. You know that's, what? Thank you very much for this reading. reading. I really appreciate it. And this is something that I that I needed to hear. It really from I know my circumstances cool. and if I look at my circumstances and the reading that you gave me is very accurate.
you actually it's spot on and wow thanks a lot for that you're welcome <laughs> um yeah well i mean you hey that was completely unrehearsed and uh i had no idea that you were going to ask for that and you really did take me by surprise um, you know <laughs> did I and put it's, you on the you put me on, put the, you spot. on the spot <laughs> yeah yeah you really did but uh yeah as i said you know it's amazing how accurate the cards can be how they really will answer the questions and stuff mm. and um this is meant to be a really it's meant to be a tool and of course, any tarot deck is a tool, right? Mm. Um, the difference with this deck is that it's specifically attuned to the gods, the demons, whatever you want to call them, okay? Before they were demonized by the church, they were considered our ancestors. They were considered wise ones that we would just turn to for advice. There was no BS about, ooh, fallen angels and all this garbage, okay? So try and get that out of your head. Okay, um, it's more about these are people that are actually related to us. We have a relation to them, and they the reason that they even want to help us at all is because we are part of their family. And when they look at us, it's like a parent looking at a child, and they see themselves in us. And like any good parent, they want that child to have the best that they can. You know, they want they want them to have a good life. They want them to to grow up to be successful to prosper yeah, yeah um self self uh actualized independent mature adults that's that's the goal that's what they want they don't want somebody dependent they don't want you on your knees they don't want you worshiping and bowing and scraping like a slave five times a day in their direction all that stuff is bs and um so all this nonsense that I'm constantly hearing about Satan's demons are, are, you know, out to steal your soul and they're out to uh, make you slaves and, um, you know, they all that stuff is total BS. So mm. I'm you know. totally behind you on that 100 percent. Listen, I had a really great time in this episode. I think for a first episode, we did pretty good. And I'm very excited to continue down this path. Maybe in future episodes, we can talk a little bit more about tarot tips, maybe astrology tips. There's so many things we can cover on this platform, you know. And wow, I'm just so excited about what the potential holds for us. Well, and as we... Um go along and develop on this obviously you know this is our first podcast all right so don't be too critical <laughs> but um you know we want to actually turn it into like you know the t for us tv and eventually we want to bring on guests and interview people and talk to different people and yeah have some really great conversations and learn stuff together and um Anyway, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, and I hope that you guys are as well. Thanks very much for your time, everybody out there. Thank you, High Priest Black Mamba, for your time, as always. And it's been a pleasure, so thank you. Bye for now. Thanks, thanks everybody, for tuning in, and hail Satan. Hail Satan. Bye for now.